The charm of charms at St. John Lateran is the admirable 12th century cloister. The cloister was built in the early 13th century and completed by 1234 on the site of a previous one of which only the well was retained. The cloister was utilized by a community of canons regular, priests who followed the rule of St. Augustine and were in charge of liturgical ceremonies at the basilica. You may wish to compare it to the cloister of the Cathedral of Monreal which was built in the 12th century. 19th century book illustrations give an idea of the appearance of the cloister when Henry James visited it. The main change relates to the well which most likely was still in regular use in 1873. The cloister is the masterpiece of the Vasiletto, father and son, who were architects as well as sculptors and mosaicists. They were active at a time when the Roman Church enjoyed great power. Pope Innocent III and after him Pope Honorius III commissioned them the embellishment of S. Paolo Fuori le Mura, S. Lorenzo Fuori le Mura and of the Anagna Cathedral. They were in competition with the Cosma family, who have given their name to a typical decorative mosaic. In the inscription shown in the icon of this page the word doctor indicates that the Vasiletto were proud of their knowledge of ancient art which permeates the design of the cloister. They did not employ statues, capitals, decorations, etc. taken from ancient monuments, although these were widely available, but they recreated them. The lion gargoyles were based on those of Hadrianium, but here and there the Vasiletto placed some human heads which are typical of medieval buildings. The main mosaic band which decorates the cloister was made up of very minute glass tesserae and larger pieces of white and green marbles and porphyry. The Vasiletto arranged the decoration of the band so that circles and squares are linked in a dynamic way. The Vasiletto placed reliefs in the small triangular spaces between two arches which is something unusual in the ancient monuments of Rome, because series of arches, apart from aqueducts, are typical of Byzantine monuments such as St. Simeon's Martyrion in Syria. The reliefs depict floral motifs together with more intriguing subjects which probably refer to popular medieval tales we no longer know of. The Vasiletto departed from the canons of classic architecture by widely using Solomonic columns and columns twisted round each other like Hauser. They must have developed a technology to make them. During the Renaissance such kind of columns were no longer in fashion, but they were popular again in the 17th century. The Vasiletto designed a capital which is very close to the classic Corinthian one, but has features in the design of the leaves and in the use of the drill which prevailed in the late empire and in Byzantine buildings. The couples of capitals, although very similar, are never identical. The Vasiletto were so skilled that their ionic capitals at S. Lorenzo Fuori L. E. Muro were believed to be the work of ancient sculptors by J. J. Winkelmann, the art historian who set the basis of neoclassicism. Only four couples of capitals are not based on the Corinthian order, but portray mythological figures. It is difficult to understand why the Vasiletto made this choice. Perhaps they complied with the precise request of the canons who wanted to show that evil thoughts and behaviors were a constant threat. Guardian lions were placed at the sides of the main entrance of many medieval churches, see the gigantic ones at Ancona and Verona. They were very often sculptured in a pretty rough way as those at SS Apostoli. While the snout of the lion shown above is rather poor, the mane and the body are pretty well executed, bearing in mind that the Vasiletto did not have the opportunity of seeing an actual lion, but based their work on ancient statues and reliefs.